other one is the other one. Everyone understand? This is very key and I find that this is really helpful to a lot of students and it helps so much, like enormously when you're studying for this board particularly, but like probably at all the boards, you know, if you can just uh, see something that has like two things that you need to memorize, just memorize one of them as long as the other one's the opposite situation. And then you just saved yourself like a whole lot of memorization and you saved yourself a lot of time as well which we no none of us have a lot of, right? Okay, so to continue on, the now that we know the anatomy of the heart and the most basic structures, um, and I'll fill in the gaps as I uh, explain the different types of circulation, okay? So as you can see in this picture now, this has blue and red, okay? Conventionally, blue is deoxygenated blood, okay? And then red is the um, oxygenated blood. The blue aspect here belongs to, at this part, going up toward the lungs up here, and then back toward the heart, where it's red here, up to here. This circuit is called the pulmonary circulation, okay, because it involves the lungs. So medical terminology here, you can see already, helps you a lot because you see the word pulmonary, you should think lungs, pulmonary circulation, goes from heart to lungs and then back to heart. And it involves the lungs, so it's called the pulmonary circuit. So it goes from here to here and then back to the heart. That's one circuit. Now the heart has a second circuit. It Once this oxygenated blood comes back, right, from the pulmonary circuit here, back into the left atrium here, it goes into the left ventricle and then out the aorta, and then out toward the body. So when you go, when we say body, it's the entire body. So it could be like the finger, it could be the muscles, it could be, you know, your different tissues and different parts. It could be your organs, like your lungs, your heart, your brain, um, all those organs and tissues, okay? And then once the oxygen is fed to those tissues, then the oxygenated blood becomes deoxygenated because the oxygen is kicked off and given to those different organs. Now the blood becomes deoxygenated, and so now the convention here, as you can see, is blue on the screen here. And then the blood will return to the heart through veins, okay? So always remember arteries away, veins toward the heart. So the veins that are going toward the heart eventually the most important ones are called the vena cava, okay? So you've got an inferior and a superior vena cava that will eventually lead into the right atrium here, feeds back into the heart, goes from the right atrium here via the right, right, the tricuspid valve. It goes into the right ventricle, and then from the right ventricle, it's going to go out to this area. They call it the pulmonary trunk, and then because, again, it's going away from the heart toward the lungs, it's called the pulmonary artery, and then to the lungs where it gets oxygenated, and then we completed the circuit. It comes back via the pulmonary vein, right, because vein towards. So this part with the oxygenated blood is called the pulmonary vein. It goes back to the left atrium. From the left atrium goes through the bicuspid or mitral valve, right, into the left ventricle. And from the left ventricle, the blood gets pumped out to the aorta. And then from the aorta, it's going to go out, out, out to the body, okay? And then back. So now you can see this is the circuit. This is the flow of blood through the heart and the body and the lungs. And this is how it's all connected. You must know this very well, okay? So you may know this already. And if you don't, um, take some time to kind of memorize how this works. Uh, and if I were you, just pretend that you're like a blood vessel. Start somewhere in the heart to test yourself or test yourself by putting, you know, the blood vessel in the lungs or in the body or here in the aorta or here in the pulmonary uh, vein or here in the pulmonary artery. And then trace the circuit until you get back to the same place and then use words and describe what's going on and then commit that to memory so that you can know and test yourself so that you really, really understand and show that you can understand uh, how it really works and then that you're clear on how it works.
Okay. So here is a more simplified diagram about how the flow works. So they don't have to be an artist to kind of understand um, how the flow works. So here in my book, you can see that I made a simpler diagram uh, to basically convey to you the flow of blood through the circuits uh, of the heart and then to the body and the lungs and the connections there. So it's very simple. Uh, I also give examples too so that I actually do follow you know, from one area to another and then you should do it yourself. For the board purposes, because you don't have that much time, I would suggest drawing this diagram that you can see here. It's really easy and quick. This takes me all of 20 seconds. And I actually did draw this out on my uh, on the board when I was taking my biomed board way back when. Um, so if you've taken other boards, you know that um, you know that you're given like a slate with like a little marker that you can draw on. So I would recommend drawing this out and then labeling as I have here. And this shouldn't take you more than 20 seconds because it's really, really easy to do. And you can see uh, the flow and you can get it really accurately and quickly. Uh, and once you get this drawing down, you may get questions. And I, on my personal board question, I actually do remember having a couple questions about heart failure, which is a type of pathology, uh, which I will go into shortly. And then you will see kind of how this all comes together and it shows uh, why you should take the time to kind of learn things such as this. Um, so if you're ready, let's do it right now. Let's talk about heart failure, okay? Now we're talking about different pathologies.